What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today I'm joined by two great players, Eric Gansman and Rukan Shao. We're going to be talking about the current meta shift in standard and talking about what kind of decks you could be expecting at the rest of your quarter two standard cups and what decks are a good choice for you to play at them if you're looking to top cut and maybe get some points. So, guys, you want to introduce yourself, uh, Eric and then Rukan? Yeah, sure. So I'm Eric. I've been playing since 2011, uh, more competitively since like late 2012, 2013. Uh, currently, I go to school at IU, Indiana Hoosiers, uh, but I'm from New York, so I've played in both areas. Uh, and as for my accomplishments, uh, I've qualified for Worlds twice. I got top 16 at Worlds in 2016, and I've gotten second at Regionals. That's my best Regionals accomplishment, and that's, that's really it. Okay, cool. Hey everyone, I'm Rukan. Um, I started playing Pokemon um, around August this year. I've been to three regionals so far. Hartford, I got a top 8. San Jose, a top 16. And Memphis, uh, I got a top 128. So, hoping to do a little bit better. Um, plan to go to just a few more regionals the rest of this year. I think I'm pretty much locked in for the Worlds invite. And then we'll go to Worlds and see how well I can do there. And um, currently, I'm sponsored by Dead Draw Gaming. So... Awesome. Okay. And Rukan, so you've been, did you start playing the game before you started competitively playing or? Yeah. Did you yeah. Start? So I played, I played on PTCGO exclusively for about a year and then I started, uh, I bought my physical cards around August this year. Okay, cool. So let's get right on into it. Um, first question I have for you guys is what caused Vikabulu to become both popular and strong in the current meta? The current standard meta. Just real quick, um, all the questions we'll be dealing with here are standard format related. Um, so I think uh, the reason it's popular is because people see a lot of 210 HP Pokemon, and they they just think, oh, this is perfect. While I don't I don't think that alone makes a uh, Vigaval Bulu good. I think that's what a lot of people see, and I think that's what makes it popular. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I think uh, since Gardevoir is less popular now. People are, have the option to tech less for Gardevoir, which means Bulu decks can afford to be more consistent without running into too many Gardevoirs and taking an auto loss because they didn't tech for the Gardevoir matchup. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Very good. Uh, Eric, do you have anything to add that Rukan missed on that? I think you pretty much covered it. Yeah, I think I, I disagree with why it's popular. I actually think the reason it's popular is because uh, a lot of good players are hyping it. Like Peter Keek has been hyping it. Uh, yeah. my, Michael catron has been hyping it. And I actually don't think the, good, the deck is good whatsoever. I think the deck is really bad. Uh, <laughs> even even though, like Rukan said, Gardevoir is out of the meta. And that was one of its biggest losses. Uh, like very few wow. people are playing Gardevoir currently. Uh, I think even if you tech for it, this is my opinion. Obviously, you might disagree. But I think even if you tech for it with like four Kakui, Tapu Koko, like all that stuff, you still take a loss to Gardevoir. But now that Gardevoir is kind of out of the meta and not very many people are playing it, people think it's a lot better because of that. But personally, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I think the reason that it's a lot more popular currently is because a lot of like good players are hyping it. My opinion on that is like before uh, Broken Vor came out, Gardevoir just didn't have feeling. So like you could just tech a Clefairy and some other stuff and you'll, you'll just outpressure it. And I, I felt like back then, it was probably a, one of Bulu's most favorite matchups if you tech the Clefairy. Um, but then Broken War came out, and now you have a complication, right? Clefairy isn't good enough because they can max potion their energies off. Um, and then parallel, double parallel, they can knock out your artillery. They can block you from taking one shots without taking out your field blower. So when Broken War came out, it shot down again, and now it's kind of making a resurgence. That's kind of what I think about it. I don't. I don't think it was ever bad against Gardevoir. I think uh, you have to get. There's a little getting used to, but I. I always thought with the proper text, Bula was favored against Gardevoir. Yeah, I think you can definitely tech for it. I think even if you do tech for it with like the text that we were talking about earlier, like uh, Tapu Koko, uh, the Kakuis, Clefairy, Mew, Mew is a good tech against it for Gallade. Uh, mm -hmm. I think even with those texts, I don't know. I personally, I was just testing really favorably against it. Um, but I'm sure you can probably beat some bad Gardevoir players who just don't know how to play the matchup. But I think, yeah. like you said, I think Broken Var just made Blue. Yeah, Broken Var is a lot harder yeah. for the next. Bro just... Broken Var just destroys Blue. <laughs> and I think that's the best variant. So. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'll put my opinion in. I think if you if you have two equally skilled players playing um, Bulu versus Gardevoir, I do think the Gardevoir player will usually win. 
Mm. Um, that's just my opinion. I think if they're equally skilled, the Gardevoir player has a slight advantage. Um, I first, my, my personal opinion is that it, it's a little rock, paper, scissors, because there's a lot of ways to attack Bulu against Gardevoir. Yeah, yeah, you're, I right, think, you're right. I think the Kukui attacks. version is bad against um, decks that run like uh, the double parallel, because you just can't stick your artillery, and you can't stick the artillery, you can't drop Kukui's consistently. Mm-hmm. And then if they run the double parallel, you can run the uh, like the Coco GX, uh, Mew, and Clefairy version, like the one I ran for Hartford, and that's a lot better because A, you're not hit by parallel as hard, and then you're constantly switching up your strategy. So either they brick their hand just to play against all of your options, or they play and they just play into one of them and you just counter that one of them. I found that that particular version is against good against like certain guard war variants, but like yeah. And then if they don't run mine, it's it's kind of like really rock, paper, scissors, depending on which text they choose to run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think a lot of it comes down to the text. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I don't want to spend too much time on Bulu versus Gardevoir, yep. since right now Gardevoir is not uh, one of the more popular decks we're seeing at standard tournaments. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's go on to question two. Um, so a, a, well, a lot of what I want to do in this video is um, talk about the questions I'm hearing from the average player for League Cups. And I've been hearing a lot from my friends and people on Verbank and Hefante well, what beats Bulu? Like, how do you counter Bulu? Like, I see people winning tournaments and a lot of top eights with Bulu. What do I do to beat it? So what are Bulu's inherent weaknesses? And what do you think an archetype... Like, if you knew you were going to play against five Bulu, all Swiss rounds of your next standard League Cup, what would you play to beat Bulu? And what are its inherent weaknesses? <laughs> yeah, Metagross. <laughs> I do play Metagross, but I don't yeah. recommend it. <laughs> um, like Gardevoir is a good because a lot of the Bulus are they aren't teching for Gardevoir, so you're just going to beat them on average. Mm-hmm. If you really, really want to beat them, you can put a Clefairy in your Gardevoir, and then Bulu just has no chance of winning. Yeah, I've been thinking of Clefairy like for like the Lycanroc matchup. Like it's not going to help you against Buzzwool uh, Lycanroc, which I think is a big issue for Gardevoir. Mm-hmm. But like if you bridge out a Clefairy and put a Fairy Energy on it, suddenly. They either need to Lycan Rock up the Clefairy, or you attach a DCE and you take a knockout on either a Lycan Rock or a Zorark if they put down a Lycan Rock at all. So I think that's kind of interesting. I don't know how good it is. I don't I'm kind of focused on expanded, so I don't have time to test that, but okay. it seems interesting. Okay. Eric, yeah. any okay, there you go. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, I, uh, so I've heard a lot about the Clefairy as well in Gardevoir, but I'm gonna focus more on Pika Blue. Uh, so I think if you want to beat Pika Blue, like you said, Gardevoir is a great play. I think Gardevoir, like I said, just beats it pretty hard. Uh, and that's what I was playing currently in my meta, which is in New York City, a lot of people are playing uh, Vika Blue because Peter Kika, Tristan Masek, or all uh, all yeah. the New York City people are just hyping that up like out yeah. the out the wazoo. So there's a lot of Vika Blue. So I play Gardevoir. Uh, I think Lycanroc's Zorark also has a good matchup against Vika Blue, even though people say it doesn't, because one of Vika Blue's biggest issues is its consistency. And yeah. Lycanroc's Zorark just preys on inconsistent decks. Uh, and it just all all you need to do is just focus down the Grubbins and focus down the Vika Volts. And once they're out of play, Tapu Blue just can't do anything. Uh, so I think that's uh, something that uh, one of the decks that actually beats it pretty hard. Uh, and then... I don't uh, actually agree with the, the Vika Vault hunting down strategy as a Bulu player. Okay. Usually when when someone does that, unless I miss my Bridget, it's usually an auto win for me because they take prizes too slowly. Mm-hmm. And the Vika Vault's kind of hard to kill it, unless you have that two energy uh, Lycan Rock available. Or like they played into Stand in Zorark or something along those lines. Because mm-hmm. like once the Vika Vault's up, the second one... Is really hard to kill and they can just dig out like they can bridge it for one if they want to or something like that so i don't think that's the strategy mm-hmm. i think uh you, if you take ahmed ali's list just the one reverse valley kakui zorark just go for the prize trade you're more consistent so you're more likely to start off with the prize lead and as long as you're able to maintain two for two trades you should win and you just don't need to deal with the vika vaults and i think that's probably yeah. the most consistent way to deal with uh bulu because you don't always brick the the Vika Vault if you go for it. Right? That's pretty interesting. I haven't played with the Reverse Valley list, but that sounds like a really good strategy, so it's probably something yeah. I'll try out if I play that deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there are two other decks that I think have pretty good Vika Vault matchups. Uh, one is Volcanion, just because you're so fast and you're so just consistent, which, like again, that's yeah. that's one of Vika Vault's issues, is just losing the consistency. I've been playing a capture version of Volcanion 2, where you can just flip and just take a lot of early knockouts on Grubbins and mm-hmm. really spend back a bunch, too. And obviously... You have a bunch of baby Volcanians if you use Dean Nizam's list, which I think is mm-hmm. clearly, clearly the best Volcanian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
there's Agreed. like no reason to play any other list right now besides for that and like maybe make a couple changes like maybe put max lixter in, maybe put catchers like i've been trying but like that like take his like skeleton and just adapt that because it's clearly the best Volcanian list yeah. and I think Volcanian has a pretty good Vika Bulu matchup and then finally I know a lot of people disagree but I think Greninja has a pretty good matchup against it uh, I think it's not like the best deck that you can play against Vika Bulu but I think that uh, if you survive the early game and you can get to late game with two Greninja breaks and just start shadow switching you should just win mm -hmm. the game um, so if you can get to that point I think you're very favored but it's just getting to that point can be an issue against the deck I think the matchups is like almost 50-50. I think it might be like 55 Bulu, I, but like it's really close. Like Bulu yeah. gets turned to Vika Vault um, like 40% of games, mm -hmm. and then sometimes it'll get turned to Vika Vault. So. Yeah, I think it really comes down to just how quickly Vika Vault gets their stuff out, because if you give Greninja the time, like I said, to get, yeah, their, you will lose. To get up to your breaks, you're, yeah, you're going to lose 100%. Yeah. Uh, but if you, if you get that early Vika Vault and you just start just putting energy on Bulu and you don't uh, discard your energy and just load it up as much as you can, uh, yeah. then then you're probably in a good spot. Cool. Cool. Sounds good. Um, so, yeah, I just want to touch on, um, I completely agree, Eric, that I think Lycanroc Zork is not, like, I've been hearing that it's an unfavored matchup versus Bulu, like that Bulu is going to win, but I think at worst it's 50-50. It might even be slightly in Lycanroc Zorok's favor just because you have that consistency and you have that early game aggression. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we covered that pretty well. Let's go on to question number three. So where do we think the Guard of RGX variants are in the meta um, for the last few weeks of Quarter 2 Cups? Do we think it's a top deck? Has it fallen off? Would it be a huge surprise if Guard of RGX won your upcoming League Cup? Eric, you can start yeah. this. Uh, so I think Gardevoir is still the best deck in the format. You, uh, I mean, if you look at my results uh, and you look at the decks that I'm playing, like I've only been playing Gardevoir in Standard since I came back from playing VDC. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think Gardevoir is just the clear best deck. Uh, the only issue Gardevoir has really is its consistency issues. Sometimes, and by consistency issues, I'm not like saying you miss your supporters or anything. It's just it, you miss your evolutions, and that's yeah. where Gardevoir can that's where Gardevoir can really falter. So I've been trying a couple of lists where you play like two Evo Soda on top of what you have. Uh, I've seen people play so. Sylveon, and I think Sylveon's really bad because the the logic that people play Sylve that uh, people run Sylveon is that it helps you get your uh, it helps with your consistency and getting your stuff out, but it can just be no. end away, and yeah. it's not it's not really that helpful in consistency, and it's just two free prizes, and it's not really helping you against these aggro decks like Buzzwall, Lycanroc that could just go around it. Wow! So if you're gonna if you're gonna do that. Just play Evo Sodas instead. Just take out the one one Sylvia and put in two Evo Sodas because that takes it directly into into the board, onto board, uh, mm -hmm. and it just helps you get your evolutions out faster. So I think Sylveon's really bad. Don't play Sylveon if you're going to play Gardevoir. Uh, and I think, I, like I said, I think Gardevoir is still the best deck in the format. Uh, if you're willing to accept like one or two games every single tournament where you're not going to set up super quickly, then you shouldn't be playing any other deck. And it, you know, if you are scared of that, then play a Zorark deck because they're by far the most consistent decks in the format. Yeah. But if you're willing to take a little bit of inconsistency just for the sheer like power of Gardevoir, because if Gardevoir gets set up, there there is just no better deck in the format. Yeah. And, I don't, yeah. and I don't think anyone can argue that. So like if I wouldn't be surprised if Gardevoir won cups, I still think it's the best deck in the format. Uh Broken Voir is broken for a reason. So yeah, that that those are my thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. Um the only issue that Gardevoir has is its consistency. But the issue I think is that like at regionals, since you have to go seven two these days consistency is a lot more important than it used to be like i, I did some quick math uh, on one of the ddg articles and basically like um zoroark's like 75 percent consistent in terms of being able to set up gardevoir is obviously less than that if you assume 75 percent consistency on setup and you if you assume that you just lose every game where you don't set up then you still have like a 15 percent chance to just miss day two at a regional even with a super consistent zoroark deck and if, if you take just a few percentage points like 10 percentage points off your consist uh, set of consistency that 15 percent goes up to like 50 percent so it's like even though it's a very small number of consi uh, percentage points in terms of consistency you lose a lot in terms of how often you'll make day two plus i think like with the player base bigger at regionals now um you're probably going to run into more bad players in which case zorark helps you farm those auto wins more easily than something like Gardevoir, whereas Gardevoir might be a good pick if you're shooting to like 
maybe try to do really not necessarily make take day two consistently, but win day two consistently. Exactly. Yeah. I was I was about to say if you want to win a tournament, you're gonna play Gardevoir. If you want a mm-hmm. day two and that's all you really care about, you're, yeah, you're gonna play Zorark. Yeah. So it, it's really just a difference in philosophy and like what you're aiming for and how, what kind of tournament success you're looking to go for. Yep. Like yep. At, at Memphis, where I played Gardevoir, I only did you two out of the two games out of oh, I don't know how many I played, probably like close to 20 games or something, and that's only 10% of my games, but I still went 5-3-1 just because even though I dead drew only twice, and of course it happened back-to-back in the same set, yeah. but <laughs> but like even with just uh, two dead draws, I just still had a little bit of consistency issues, and I just couldn't you know set up fast enough to win a lot of games. Like I played against Dean Azam, who was playing Volcanian, mm-hmm. and that's a very, very favorable matchup for Gar- Gardevoir. Yeah. He was, he was just so much more consistent than me and just absolutely run, ran through me because I just couldn't get my evolutions up in time, and he just mm-hmm. he had just taken way too much of a prize lead. So I, I totally agree with what Rukan said. If you want to win an entire tournament and you're and you're okay with taking you know some days where you're not going to make day two and you're going to go five three one like I went, Gardevoir is by far the best play that you can make. But if you yeah. want to make if you want to like consistently make day two, just get the money and you know not not really aim for the win, but just you know aim for a solid result. Definitely go Zorark or like yeah. a, a more consistent deck than Gardevoir. All right, I do want to focus on League Cups here. Um, but that was a great discussion nonetheless. Um, so we are saying that Gardevoir, you think, still is a solid pick for League Cups. I just want to uh, confirm yeah. that. Okay. I, yeah. I think it's okay to take less consistency for League Cups because there's just there's so many and you have so much time. So like if you yeah. do badly at one League Cup, oh no, you wasted just go a day. To the next. I'll, yeah, I'm gonna go to the next League Cup. Yeah. And for for League Cups, what you got to do is you just gotta predict your meta mm-hmm. and just play the best deck that, in that meta. And yep. if Gardevoir isn't just hard countered in that meta, and there really aren't that many yeah. decks hard counter it, just yeah. play Gardevoir. So yeah. 99% of the time, well, not 99% of the time, but a lot of the time, <laughs> Gardevoir is the best one. I mean, for me personally, I, I personally wouldn't because I don't, uh, you don't, the, the, the point threshold this year is pretty low. So you don't really need to top League Cups unless you're going for top, top 16. If you're not, just, just play something consistent, you know, uh, save yourself 20, uh, like 12 hours of going to one less League Cup. And just take, you know, maybe you only go get 32 points instead of 50. It's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things if you're not going for top 16. If you're going for top 16, uh, go mm-hmm. ahead, play something like Gardevoir. I think it makes a lot of sense. Otherwise, I would probably just stick to Zoroark. That's fair, yeah. Yeah, personally, I'm trying to average 70 points a, a cup quarter. Um, so I'm just, like, for me, I'm playing whatever I think is most consistent. Yeah. Um, in quarter one, I just couldn't not play Gardevoir just because it was so much more powerful than everything. So I played, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I played Gardevoir sure. and yeah. got 90 points out of my first cup quarter. But um, this one, I'm looking at uh, stage one decks just because I want to get a consistent... I want to get, like, top four. I don't care if I win the tournament. I just want some points. Mm-hmm. That is a reasonable choice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, question four. So we're looking at Zorark Lycanroc and Buzzwell Lycanroc being called two of the strongest decks in the meta right now. Not the best mm-hmm. decks, but they're two of the strongest. Um, talk about Gardevoir versus Zorark Lycanroc or, and or Gardevoir versus Lycanroc Buzzwall, if either of you have any um, experience on either sides of those matchups. I've got a lot of experience in both of those. I've okay, played a lot. Ahead. I've played a lot of Gardevoir uh, <laughs> so I, I I know both of those pretty uh, pretty well. Uh, so like Rukan said earlier, Buzzwell Lycanroc is probably Gardevoir's worst matchup in the meta right now, besides for Greninja. But that deck just sucks, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'd say Buzzwell Lycanroc is your worst matchup by a lot. And I I teched for it at my last uh, League Cup. I play Mr. Mime and I played Mew Ex. Both uh, texts that are specifically for Buzzwall. Like yeah. Mr. Mime has Mr. Mime has some utility in other matchups, but it's Mew it's is most... just Buzzwall. Yeah. Mew, Mew oh, is yeah. solely for Buzzwall. Yeah. How, how does the Mew EX work if you don't have a Gardevoir GX up? Uh, you can also use Gallade. Oh, uh, but you still you need a stage yeah, two you, up. Yeah, you need it. to get okay. you need to get the stage two up. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the issue. So, but it's really once you get it set up and you yeah, get yeah. a stage two playing, you just run through. Them. So yes. Yes. It, they're two really good techs for it. Uh, also, there's another thing you can do with um, UEX. You can also use, uh, if you use the Psychic Gardevoir, or Psychic Ralts, excuse me, which oh, I, you yeah. can use uh, DCE and a Choice Band to do 100 damage, uh, mm-hmm. which is pretty good. You can also do it with the regular Ralts, too, but I mean, you don't. You probably don't want to be attacking with the Ralts because yeah. uh, you're putting one in danger. Yeah. So, yeah, Mew is really good in that matchup, uh, and I teched it just for that. And even with those techs, I 
probably would still say the matchup's like 40 60. So, yeah. uh, it, it's a pretty bad matchup. They just they have way too much early game pressure uh, for you uh, to deal with, even with a bunch of max potions and all those techs that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can just start sniping your Ralts too. They don't care about your Lolan Bull picks. They're most likely going to knock out your Lolan Bull picks on turn one because all, yep. all they need is a Reggie Rock and a strong energy, and you're knocked out. Uh, and if your Lolan Bull picks get knocked out before you even get to use it, you're in a really bad spot. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Bu Buzzwell has a really good Gardevoir matchup, so uh, that that's one matchup that I'd be really scared about for Gardevoir. As for uh, Lycanroc Zoroark, I've seen people online saying that it's like 70-30 Lycanroc Zoroark over Gardevoir, and they're just, they're so wrong. This, yeah, it's not close. It is a true 50-50. I've played a ton of that matchup, and it is super close. So what you want to do as Gardevoir is you want to parallel yourself as soon as you can, and just get your yeah. best to three, because if you parallel yourself to three, Lycanroc needs double strong energy Choice Bank Kakui to knock you out with one hit yeah. with this rogue, which is a lot for them to take. Uh, for a yeah. lot of them to get. Yeah. So that's something that they, they really can't work around if you play that correctly. And if you do that, if you do that, then you're just going to run through them with guard because they're going to be yeah. trading two shots with you and you have max potions, and they can't do anything about that. And Gallade is also a really good uh, attacker in this matchup, too, because they don't want to Lycan Rock uh, Dangerous Rogue if they don't have to, because that's wasting a GX attack, uh, which they really need to knock out your guard of war. Uh, and Gallade can just run through those door works, obviously. So if you play the matchup correctly and you draw into what you need, it's a really good matchup for Gardevoir, but the issue is, again, Gardevoir Did doesn't, you what you need? Draw into, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gardevoir just doesn't always draw into what they need. So that's why it's a 50-50, because if you get set up, you're going to destroy them, if you know how to play the matchup. You have yeah. to you yeah, have yeah. to kill yourself, you have to keep your bench below three, and you have to use Gallade if you can, but you have to get it all set up. Yeah, yeah. so, that's so the thing if you go into that matchup with the Eric Gensman uh, game plan that he just laid out, and you draw what you need, uh, I think you have a good chance as Guardi in that matchup. That sounds yeah. like a really good game plan. Rukan, you had something to add to? Honestly, I don't play Gardevoir that much. All I know is, like, I asked Cena what he thought about the matchup. He probably tested, like, 100 times or something. And he just said 50-50. And if he says 50-50, I believe that. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, Cena's one of my main, like, testing partners, especially with Gardevoir. And this is, like, the strategy that we've come up with. We play double parallel for this. And also just because it's so good in the meta right now. It's like, so you, good. You, you really need double parallel for this. Because if you don't play double parallel in this matchup, you're just going to get destroyed. Because yes, you, yes. you have to turn one Bridget in this matchup. And you have to get rid of the Lele that you get uh, to turn one per Yes, day. yeah. So question. You, yeah, you have to play it. Uh, yeah. Question. Um, last I spoke to Cena, he was testing with Oranguru. Do you guys have an opinion on Oranguru versus Octillery in the Broken Vor lists? Yeah, so uh, Oranguru is really good. But it's not a it's not an Octillery substitute. You have to okay. play Octillery. Octillery is just so much better than a Orang than a Ranguru. Yeah. But if you play Octillery plus a Ranguru, it's mm -hmm. it's really good. It gives you just <laughs> it gives you like an absurd amount of draw that like you just can't you can't compare to it honestly. Okay, so, so you run it, one Oranguru and then a one one Octillery, I guess. I've had that at some points. Yeah, I didn't play it for uh, I didn't play it for. Uh, Memphis. It was my last cut. I had a ring yeah. and until the night before, and I was like, eh, I probably need a second field blower instead, just for double parallel. Because yeah. I mean, a lot of people are playing double parallel because it's so good. Uh, mm. So I was like, eh, I don't really want to get stuck with a one parallel, uh, with the like, parallels on turn one, and not like being able to get out of it, and only having to have one field blower. Yeah, so I put yeah. a second field blower. But a ring is really good. The one 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 line of one one artillery and one ring yeah. just gives you a ridiculous amount of draw, and it basically makes you end proof. And also, yeah. a ring is a really good attacker too. People don't consider it, but Oranguru just kills every single basic in the format currently. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah Oranguru is really good. Uh, I would definitely consider it if you can find space. Yeah. Uh, there, there are a lot of techs in Gardevoir that you can play, but I think Oranguru is probably one of the better ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I definitely wouldn't replace Octillery with it. I just want to make that super clear. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Cena's, been, Cena's been testing only with Oranguru, and I call him stupid all the time for it. because I, <laughs> okay. I, I, okay. I, I don't think you can take out Octillery, because you... If you only have a Rangaroo and you only have draw like end proof draw up to you might just miss your max potions or something. Yeah, you're just it's not a, it's not enough draw for the deck because you just need so many different cards to like always have these cards in hand and just yeah. have these different plays. So a Rangaroo doesn't give you enough draw on its own, but in conjunction with Octillery, it just gives you a ridiculous amount of draw. Yep. Yeah, I tested a lot of uh, Gardevoir going into Hartford, I believe, with just. Aranguru without the Octillery just to make space for Tex and I just miss the Octillery like all the time. Like mm -hmm. I always wish I was drawing two more cards. Yeah. Okay, I, so I, we're going to call um so basically that question about Zorak Lake and Rock and Buzzwell Lake and Rock versus Guardi was for let's say a player has a meta of mostly Zorak Lake and Rock. Like they're 
they can guarantee five to ten players are going to be playing it. Yeah, um, that's still fine. Yeah, that's not a reason to not play guard. It's not a reason to yeah. stop playing Gardevoir. But oh, 100%. on the other hand, if your meta is ten players that you can guarantee are going to be playing Buzzwell Lake and Rock, maybe think yeah. about another deck. <laughs> yeah, probably. Or play the Sylveon version, but if you're playing the Sylveon version, why are you playing Gardevoir? <laughs> <laughs> like, you just shouldn't play Gardevoir if you're playing Sylveon. You're just you're doing it wrong. Um, okay, so let's move to question number five. Um, Eric, I think you, you just answered that for me. Question number five was, if you're entering a best-of-one cup this weekend, standard format with Gardevoir, is it Guardi Sylve or Max Potion Guardi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think I just answered it. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're really worried about the consistency, like I was saying, just play some Evo Sodas. Evo Sodas can really help that out. Uh, but honestly, I'm just uh, I'm personally of the belief that I'd rather not play those, and I'd rather just play better tech cards. Uh, and I'll take if I do badly at a league cup, I'll do badly at a league cup. So it, if I was if I was you playing at a league cup, uh, average Joe that's listening to this, I would just play Broken Fire because it's just it's so much better. Max potions are just so stupidly good, and Sylveon is just so stupidly bad. <laughs> All right, Rukan, any other thoughts? No, no. Trust Eric. He's okay. the uh, yeah. He's the Gardevoir expert here. Yeah, I haven't put too much uh, testing into Gardevoir ever since uh, Zorark came out. Like I kind of switched over to Stage One decks, but um, I do have Sylveon Guardi built right now, and I just had it built by default because I wanted something more consistent. But like like you said, Sylveon is just prize bait for like. Buzzwell, Lycanroc, and the faster decks, like, they just get two easy prizes off of the Sylveon, and I've been finding that out more and more with every game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's its biggest issue. That, and like I said earlier, that, it, like, all the stuff that you get with Sylveon can just be end away. And mm -hmm. every every single deck, except for <laughs> Volcanian, plays four end right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, the chances of it getting end away are pretty high. So, 99% of the time, your Sylveon is useless, and it's just yeah. too big. They can just hold. They and they have so many outs. It's either they have the raw end or they have the ultra ball for the yeah. lele, or they have the lele. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, if you, if you want to play a more consistent card of our version, just put in some Evo sodas. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, what is your opinion on the validity of Espeon Garb or Drampa Garb or a combination of the two in the current standard meta? No. Ugh. Awful. Awful. You might beat some Bulus, but that's it. It's it is so bad. There, there's just no reason to play that deck right now. Like they, they're just so, they're so outclassed by so many things, and they take such bad Zoroark matchups that there's yeah. just, there's just no reason to play them. Like I've tested a lot with Xander Pero. He's one of my main testing partners, and he was trying out SP on Guard before Memphis, and he was like, "Man, if I can get it to beat Zoroark, like I would play, this, I would play this deck because he lo yeah. he loves that deck." I think and that a few it, times you, a day. <laughs> you, you, you cannot beat Zoroark. There's just no way, yeah. and. Yeah, I, I just wouldn't play him. I One of my friends was con like considering it for a League Cup that I was at this weekend, and I literally just took his deck away from him. I was like, you're not playing this deck. I won't, I won't, let, I won't let you do that. Friends don't let friends play Espeon or Drampa Garb. <laughs> yeah, someone uh, top aided at uh, the League Cup I went to last weekend. With um... Yeah, I heard about that. I, that that person, whoever that was, I don't remember who it was, but they're the reason I kept the second field blow in because someone was like, oh, Garb got top eight at one of our local league cups because mm -hmm. yeah. Luke and I live in a similar area in New York, New Jersey. So yeah, someone was yeah. like, on the ride there, I was like, I really want to take out the second field blower because it's been pretty useless because Gardevoir, the reason I had it in, like I said, it's for the second Parallel City. But not a lot of decks are playing Parallel City anymore because Gardevoir was the main one and not a lot of people are playing Gardevoir anymore. So like... You don't need it for Gar for Garbodor because Garbodor is dead, and you don't need it for Gardevoir. So you really only need like one field blower now at most. You can probably cut it to zero, but that's a little risky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I was really wanting to cut it down to, to one field blower. So I was like, yeah, someone just got top eight with a with Garbodor. I was like, God dang it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it stinks. Yeah. I have to keep it in. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, it's just it's super underwhelming. Like Espeon Drampa Garb was like one of my favorite decks of the. Uh, like when Guardians Rising came out, like Espeon Garb was my favorite deck, and so I really wanted to keep it going. But it's just pretty underwhelming right now, and like yeah. you said, it's outclassed by things. Yep, I agree. Okay, so um, there was a follow up to that question. What would your local League Cup meta have to look like for you to go in with a Garbador deck? Bulu, Bulu, Bulu. <laughs> yeah, lot, lots of Bulu, lots of Gardevoir, lots of Greninja. Uh, some Volcanian. So basically, none of these new decks that we got for Memphis yeah. Regionals. 
Yeah, no but Zoroark, basically no Zoroark, no Buzzwall. Got it. You're going to get destroyed by both of those decks. Even yeah. though Gar Garbodor has uh, the weakness against Buzzwall, Buzzwall still just destroy that deck. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So next question. Um, are there any decks we didn't go into detail here that either of you want to bring up talking about as your choices for standard league cups or things that you might be seeing at standard league cups? Uh, uh, you want to go first? Yeah, you go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, so there's only one deck that we haven't brought up that I think is actually worth talking about, and that's Decidueye Zorark. I think it's uh, a really underplayed deck currently because no one really did well with it at Memphis, even though it had like some hype going into it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think like Connor Lavelle was hyping it a lot. Um, let's see, Jimmy Pendaris and Igor Costa. Igor, yeah. They were hyping it a bit too by making a video. And I, I think it's a good deck, even though it, uh, people like haven't been playing it a lot recently. I think its biggest issue was just an awful Gar Gardevoir matchup. If people knew how to play that matchup, it's like 70-30 for Gardevoir. And now that Gardevoir's out of the meta, I think it's pretty strong. I think you've got a good Lycanroc matchup uh, because you can just ping all of their stuff. And uh, it takes them a lot uh, to one-shot you, even if you like fill your bench because it's 240 HP. So as long as you don't fill your bench fully, it takes a lot for them to one-shot you. Uh, and obviously you already have Zorark, uh, so you can trade in the Zorark mirror match, but you obviously have a better Zorark mirror match because you have extra damage on top of that with Sidui. Uh So I think Decidueye Zorark is a deck that people don't talk about a lot, and I would still consider it for League Cups. I've told my friends to consider it for League Cups still too. Uh, I don't know if I would ever play it because I think Gardevoir is just the best deck. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll probably just play Gardevoir for the rest of it. <laughs> For the rest of until you know metal is released, and even then mm -hmm. I still might play Gardevoir because it's it's just one bad matchup. Um, but yeah, I think I think the Sigui Zorak is a really good deck that we didn't mention. Cool. Yeah, um, I completely agree there. I have a question. So like my assumption, I don't really play a lot of decks. I usually just focus on a few decks. Mm -hmm. I don't really play Zorak, Lycanroc. I don't really play the Sigui, but I, I've assumed that the Lycanroc was his favorite because you could Dangerous Rogue, what does the Sigui take out a Zorak and then like Kakui a Lele? With Lycanroc in the late game, mm -hmm. is that not is that not like a consistent strategy, or is the is there ways it's, for the Sidui to go around it? It's possible. So what you really need to do is the Sidui. I haven't tested this matchup a lot because I've been focusing a lot on Gardevoir. But what I've seen like in the matchup that I've played is you really just want to ping uh, Zorak Lycanrocs and just get them all up to sixty because it takes yeah. them a while. It takes them a while to actually be able to dangerous rogue and knock out a Decidui on the bench if you manage yeah. it correctly. Yes, so if yes. you manage your bench correctly and you keep it like small, you can probably get it enough Decidueyes out like one or two where you can start just putting enough damage because they don't have. I think Pram played an Acerola in his list and that was it as healing yeah. options. Yeah, yeah, it's one and, Acerola. Yeah, so you really yeah, don't yeah. have that many healing options, and you can you know you can trade Zoroarks with them. Obviously, if they go with Lycan Rocks, and you can just bring yeah. Decidui and just one shot it pretty easily. Um, so it's as long as you just manage your bench well and you just get a bunch of uh, and you just get a bunch of um, ping damage off and spread damage yeah. off, you, like, don't put down Lele's unnecessarily, uh, yeah. then you can just SP on Devolve and just win the game. I suppose you can even protect the Lele from a Lycanroc Kakui play if they, like, they, they bench their Rock Ruff too early. You just snipe it off or something. Yep, exactly. Okay, okay yeah. I, I see it. I see it now. Cool. Yeah, I've only um, been on the side of that matchup from Lycanroc Zorark, so I haven't been, I haven't been testing Decidueye Zorark too much. But going into testing that matchup, I thought it was going to be much better for like in Rock Zorak than it actually is. Yeah. Um, just looking at it on paper, like Rukan did, um, mm -hmm. I've gotten Miraculous Shine for like four prizes several times because yeah, yeah, you only play one really Acerola. Yeah. Because you only yeah. play one Acerola. If you play a second Acerola, you do, but the average like in Rock Zorak isn't. And then you have to dig for you have to ace a rolla and then dig for your puzzles of times and try to ace a rolla again and hope they didn't get the miraculous shine off while you're trying to do that. Yeah. So I know I know Michael Pramot after uh, after Memphis he switched out the ace a rolla for a max potion in his list. And honestly, mm -hmm. if you put if you put in max potion, it's probably yeah yeah it's much it's faster. probably a lot better for Zorark like in Rock in that matchup. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if you really want to tech first like specifically for that matchup because again not a lot of people are playing Decidueye Zorark right now um, mm. but Max Potion might just be better overall it's something worth testing obviously if Fram put it in over Acerola there's probably a reason he did that he's a he's a decent player I would say yeah he's not too bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah not, not, not too bad uh, no, I, I like the Max Potion like I, I I didn't bring a Max Potion in Memphis and I was dying for it and the, the main reason is because everyone plays Enhanced Hammer so if you're going to get your energies hammered anyways you might as well Max Potion mm -hmm. it's just so much better faster than Acerola yeah that's a very good point. Yeah. 
Um, so we did talk about Volcanion a bit, but we didn't really go into talking about from Volcanion's side. We were more talking about other decks playing against Volcanion and that it is there in the meta. Um, mm -hmm. So I do think Dean Nizam's uh, 12th place list from Memphis is, like, the Volcanion list to go to, like Eric mentioned earlier in the video. Um, and it's pretty good because we have all these Vika Bulus running <coughs> around, Gardevoir's gone, um, just, uh, is Volcanion on either of your radar as a deck that you would consider playing? Uh, I wouldn't, personally. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've actually been testing it a lot because I think, I have some friends going to Australia and it's the same meta as we currently have. And I think because Gardevoir is being, you know, a lot of people are moving away from Gardevoir for some unexplained reason. I really couldn't tell you why. I think people are dumb for moving away from it, but we already discussed that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think, I think Volcanion's a really good play. Uh, I've been testing with it a bunch. Like I said, I tried putting in some Max Elixirs and Catchers. So, like, I've changed probably five or six cards in the list. Mm -hmm. uh, but Dean, Dean's list is definitely what you want to work off of. It's a really good list, and I think it's just got some really uh, strong matchups overall. So, I would try it out. Yeah, letting Volcanion go unchecked with all those items just because Trash Lanch is out of the meta, it just yep. feels so powerful playing that list. I have it built in real life, and I've been playing with it a bit. Um, it just feels so consistent and so powerful. Just really, yeah. Great. I think I think that's the major thing that it has. Is it's pro I think Volcanion with Octillery is more consistent than any Zoroark deck. I think the deck just has so much raw power, and it just cons it just is so consistent at just hitting that raw power that it's just one of those decks that you really have to account for. If yes, if, if people are playing it in your meta, if not, play it yourself because it's really good. <laughs> yeah, it just uh, it does the same thing over and over. With, like every game you have the same game plan, which is mm -hmm. really nice to have with a deck. Yeah. I, I personally don't like uh, Volcanion at all right now. Um, I don't think it's that consistent. I don't think the deck is inherently less consistent. I just think uh, the hit points on Pokemon have crept up. So now you need to hit more energies than you used to. And I think that indirectly has knocked the uh, consistency of Volcanion down. I think you need something like Octillery, but then at the same time, I think people snipe it, or personally, I still run Parallels in all my Zoroark variants. I think it's very good. And then if you just Parallel, um, it, either, it either puts them in a position where they usually have to choose, do I knock out my Oranguru or my Octillery, or do I preserve enough Volcanions in order to actually seam up, seam up to 210? Or you could just like Parallel yourself, reduce their damage by 20, um, without Parallel, I can see it being popular, but I think even in Zoroark variants, I think Parallel is still really good in, in most matchups, like in against Zoroark, against Volcanion, against Bulu. I think it's just a very good card right now. Yes, yeah, so that's that's the thing. There isn't a lot of Parallel City in the format right now. So yeah. it's, if there's ever a time for Volcanion to be good, I think this is the time. Uh, and also to, to talk about your point of needing to hit numbers, uh, the deck currently just has a really big focus on baby Volcanion. So you're not trying to one-shot anything. You're really just trying to two-shot everything and just threaten late game knockouts with your big volcanoes you're gonna have set up on the bench. So, so would you like are you saying that you would deliberately like Guzma up uh uh, a healthy Zoroark just to set up a late game plan and like protect yourself from in or something like that. Is that it or? What do you mean by like Guzman up a health? Like just to like, like would, would you, you like, would you avoid? A, would, yeah, would you avoid sh finishing off a Zoroark just to put some damage on to like a, a, a new Zoroark? I think it. I think it really depends on your hand and the board state, but it's okay. definitely not, it's definitely not a bad play. Uh, okay. Obviously, I'm not. This is like I'm very early into testing the deck. This is something that I've just started exploring in the past week. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not like a hundred percent sure on like what is the best play in that match or not. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that's something that you could definitely consider because again, like you're really just trying to, you just want to flood your field with baby Volcanians early game uh, and just you know steam up once or twice. You don't need all of your Volcanians in play. Uh, mm -hmm. And you you play super out to get them back if you get parallel back and you play yep. three to four. You play three to four Brook Brooklet Hill so you yep. can just counter the Parallel City, get Brooklet Hill out, super out of back, and then just get it right back out with Brooklet Hill. So it's a really strong combo. Uh, and I think just you also just have a, real, a lot of really good prize trades with Baby Volcanion just because you're using so many of them and you're gonna, your opponents are going to have to take so many one-prize knockouts against 130 or 170 HP uh, basics that only give up one prize because yeah. you four Fury Belt. So I really like the prize trades that it has. Uh, but as to going back to your original question, I think it's something you can consider. Uh, again, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's probably a decent strategy yeah yeah like eric said the current volcanion has possibly a different strategy than past volcanion variants 
excuse me, because you have this Volcanion, this baby Volk with 170 HP, hitting yep. you for like 90 a turn and powering up your benched Volcanion EXs two at a time. Mm -hmm. And you just, there's so, there's like, so there's at least like three threats going on at a time. And seeing as a lot of the meta is Zorark decks, Zorark can't one shot a 170 HP baby Volk. Um, it, even, can't, it can't one shot. It can't one shot a thing even with a basic uh, with with no fury belt unless they right. use the Kui. Right, so. yeah, yeah. I really like reverse valley right now. Like that's one of oh, my yeah. biggest issues. <laughs> yeah. I think there's too many tech cards that are simultaneously good, even if they might be overlooked. That uh, hit Volcanion as collateral damage, even though that they're really good against everything else. Yeah, yeah so something really I discovered the is that Buzzwall GX, the one of tech in like in Rock Zorak, is very good against Volcanion. Um uh, sets up. Because you set up those um 150 HP Volk EXs on the bench. Mm -hmm. And currently there's no Acerola or Max Potion in any of the vocalists. So you can yeah. just um jet punch twice set up two 30 HP knockouts. You get them both with 150 riotous beatings and then you get yeah. your last knockout with a dangerous rogue for and that's six prizes. You just take two prizes, two prizes, two prizes. Yeah, but I feel like I really like um, it's less if you guys haven't figured it out yet, but you put in the reverse <laughs> valley and you also hit 180 of Zorark and you just knock out two prizes and you can actually like just keep up in the prize race. Yeah, and... that's I think if you play reverse valley, it probably goes from a really bad matchup for you to probably a, a decent one. Yeah. Yeah. Reverse Maybe a little valley, bit I haven't actually tested it yet, and I don't think a lot of people have tested it. I haven't heard much talk about reverse valley, but I think it's a really, really cool tech to try out. Um, most people are just sticking with no stadiums in their Zorark lists. No, so, no. Um, but you're saying that Parallel City and Reverse Valley are things to check out. Yeah, um, I wouldn't necessarily run Parallel in, in the Lycanroc version, although right. it's a consideration. I think the Reverse Valley as a one-of is really good, especially with the popularity of Bulu. Yeah, it sounds like it hits some cool math. Yeah. Yeah, I like the I like the sound of reverse valley too. I'll probably test it out after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like right after this video. Um, okay, so last question. I, I had I have oh, one more ahead. deck I didn't get. Go to ahead. Add. Sorry about that. I haven't played this deck because, like I said, I kind of focus on a single deck um, to just to, so I get the most out of my time. But people have been testing like uh, Zorark Greninja, Ooh. and like it sounds clunky, but the idea is you just get a single Greninja up, and that's kind of like getting three Decidueyes. And now you're hitting 60 plus 120 plus choice band. You're knocking out a Zorark every single turn, unless they deal with the uh, the Greninja, in which case they need to Dangerous Rogue it or they need to play Galissapod. And then either way, it's really awkward for them. And I kind of think that's interesting. I don't know how consistent it is. Yeah, I'm, I was I'd watching my full stream. Yeah, is it? How does it run? Um, it looked like it ran better than I expected it to. <laughs> um. I don't know, it, it, but like you said, on paper, it sounds clunky, and I don't know if setting up a stage four behind your Zorark is always going to be worth it. It sounds like it's worth it in some matchups, though. I, I think the idea is that a setting up a stage four... Or stage three, it's first, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 whatever you want to call it. Setting up a stage three as compared to like trying to set up two Decidueyes in a Zorark Decidueye deck. It, I think it's, it's kind of comparable, it's just a bit slower, mm -hmm. right? Plus, then you get the the the, the volcano auto win. I guess maybe yeah. sort of. Greninja is definitely Greninja Zorak is definitely in the rogue category. Yeah, uh, I, I, but I think it's up there in terms of rogues. I think it's the only rogue right now that I would consider like experimenting with. So I haven't tested the deck whatsoever, but I'm, like so, don't take my opinion like too seriously. But yeah. All, just, all I'm gonna say is I hate Greninja. I was never, <laughs> I would never play a single Greninja deck. I think the deck is awful. Uh, so even with this new Greninja, just don't play it. That that's my opinion. <laughs> I just think it's just another take on Zorak Decidui. That that's how I see it. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting yeah, way to look at it. Yeah, you're not going for the, like the water duplicates. It's it's just a different decision. Yeah, you actually play it's a different frog. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So everybody, we covered every deck we wanted to talk about here. Mm hmm Okay. Cool. Cool. So uh, last question. Um, give me and the viewers uh, your top two or three choices for your upcoming standard league cups. I think I already know Eric's number one, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are your top two or three choices? I wonder what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Eric, right, so for me? Oh, sorry. Yeah, oh. Rukan, you can yeah, start. No, All right, so <laughs> I'm almost certainly taking uh, Zorark Galissapod. I don't like its Lycanroc matchup, 
uh, the most, but I do like that it's the most consistent deck. I think with Parallels, you can actually tango with Lycanroc pretty well, even though they, they can just wreck you if you don't set up quickly or if they like run run the multi-switch. There's a lot of things that they can do to just beat you, but I like how the deck is uh, super consistent. I think it's I'm happy enough with the Bulu matchup because I run the Parallels. You can Armor Press, lots of stuff like that. Um, I like it better than Lycanroc against uh, Buzzwell Lycanroc. So that's I think that that's the biggest plus in the deck's favor, aside from it just being the most consistent deck in the format. And then other than that, uh, I might try Bulu just because I I love the deck. If I were to play Bulu, I'd probably run four Skyla, two Heavy Ball. Just go for maximum consistency. Um, I tried plugging Kika's list into like a simulator. That's so. Bad. And, I, and I think I got like half half the uh, turn two Vika Vault like odds as like a, a traditional Bridget list. Uh, I think if you can run like two Lele, three Bridget, four Skyla, two Heavy Ball, four Rare Candy, I think you can push up your uh, turn two Vika Vault rates uh, to like forty, maybe forty five percent if you like really go hard. And I think for, so you'll, you'll win forty percent of games just one hundred percent of the time. You'll just beat like a rock, and then you'll just you should be able to just cruise through the rest with turn three Vika Vaults. Yeah. Um, and I think you should be very favored against Lycan Rock, unless they run Reverse Valley or something along those lines. And then just dodge the Gardevoirs, dodge the random Garb decks. I think it's got a good matchup spread, um, but it's not consistent. And that's 99% of the time that will turn me off from the deck these days. Yep. Um, a little bit more wise than my, my first regional. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize... I didn't math out the consistency before I went to Hartford, but I guess it... And then you just went and got top eight anyway. Uh, <laughs> happens. I mean, yeah, I, I've I've talked to some regionals before with five supporters in my list, or just draw supporters, <laughs> or six actually, six. But yeah, so I I agree, consistency is a big thing. Yeah. Uh, so as as for what I would play, I think everyone knows Gardevoir is my my play. Uh, I don't see any reason to really defer from it at this point. Uh, so I'll give you three other plays besides that. Uh, so the conventional play that I think everyone else is on is Lycan Rock Zorark, and I think the deck right. is good. I just don't like it myself, and I wouldn't play it, but I would not argue against someone playing it because I think the deck is just really powerful. Yep. Uh, but then my other two plays, if I didn't play Gardevoir, again, I think I would play Volcanian. and I think the deck is really good, and I really want to try it out for a League Cup. So if I do go to a League Cup and I'm not playing Gardevoir, I'll most likely be playing Volcanian. Uh, and then the other deck that I think is really strong is the other one that I mentioned uh, just a couple minutes ago is Decidueye Zorark. I think the deck is still really good and just really slept on right now. So I think it's got a good spot in the meta just because people aren't preparing for it. So you all the Bulus. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Oh, oh, yeah, you crush Bulu. Crush it. Cool, cool. Yeah, I think my two I have are Lycanroc Zorark just because I love the play style. Um, you have a lot of choices, and it's also really consistent because you have all the Zoroks for draw power. And behind that is Volcanion, but I don't think I've put enough testing into the new Volcanion list to be comfortable going into the League Cup like I would be with Lycanroc Zorark. So, cool. Thank you guys um, for being on the video. I think we had a really good discussion about the standard League Cups. Um, any shout-outs, Eric and then Rukan? Uh, yeah, so follow me on my Twitter, at OrgansmanTCG. Uh, so my last name with an or in front of it, and then TCG at the end, obviously. Uh, go check out Hey Fonte. It's a group that I'm an admin of on Facebook. If you want all your competitive Pokemon uh, information, that's the best place to get it. Um, besides that, I'll just shout out my testing partners, uh, Travis Nunless, Hayden Jacobus, Oliver Barr, uh, Xander Perot. Uh, oh, I'm forgetting someone. I'm going to feel so bad that I'm forgetting them. <laughs> oh, my God. Who, Jeremiah Williams. There we go. Jeremiah Williams. Those are my main five testing partners. Cool, and then cool. uh, I've got some other people in some group chats. They know who they are. Uh, so shout out to you guys for testing with me. Cool. Rick um, I guess shout out to my sponsor, Dead Draw Gaming. Uh, they, they sell cards, but they also have like free articles. So check them out. Um, I'm probably one of the few uh, players that is in the pro, pro scene, but also uses the, the Pokemon subreddits, aside from maybe Rahul. So if you want to check that out now and then, you might find useful information now and then, sometimes. Other than that, uh, yeah, no, definitely stick to Hayfon. You definitely need that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. All right, so thank you guys again for being here on Celio's Network for this meta discussion. And uh, to the viewers, hope you all have a good day. Thank you for watching.